presentation is the first of several lectures on the various shapes that can be found in Borrelia spirochetes. Spirochetes are best known as corkscrew-shaped or sine wave mathematical forms of bacteria that differ from other bacteria in their ability to move and their ability to cause disease. Borrelia is one of a family of spirochetes, which includes treponemal spirochetes and leptospiral spirochetes. Each of the groups can manifest spirochetes with a spiral form uh, representing a corkscrew or can uh, present with forms that resemble rounded bodies or little dot like granular bodies or even minute bleb like bodies which are invisible with the ordinary microscope. Uh, the shapes that are known for spirochetes are the forms that are seen here and the uh, spiral form, which is in this box, is like a corkscrew, but uh, the legitimate forms do not stop with the corkscrew shaped form. They also include rounded forms with granular material inside what we call a cyst, and then isolated granules not associated with cysts that lie free in the body or free in the tissue. Such an example of a granular uh, grouping of spirochetes in diseased tissue is shown here and is a biofilm colony, which we will describe later in the lecture. Uh, biofilm is a community of spirochetes or other microbes, which is protected by a layer of matrix or goo uh, slime material which surrounds the individual microbes and protects them from assault by my antibiotics and other adverse conditions. Spirochetes when they infect tissue therefore are not always the corkscrew shaped form. They may show up as rounded forms or as granules or as colonies. Spirochetes do not read the textbooks, so in spite of what the textbooks say, and the textbooks tell you that only the spiral form counts in tissue, in the body, in the real world, spirochetes may exist in rounded forms, granular forms, and biofilm forms. So the spirochetal shapes that are known are the ones that you have read about in textbooks or heard about in lectures on microbiology. We're here to discuss shapes that are not well known. Shapes unknown are not spiral, so we just lose the spiral expectation and acquire a new visual vocabulary for what spirochetes may look like when they actually involve tissue and cause infection. So we bid a fond farewell, a goodbye to the textbook uh, simplicities of spirochetal shape, which is the sine wave form, and uh, we go on to uh, identify rounded forms, which are cystic or round body spirochetal forms. They uh, often contain granular material or coarser material within the cyst uh, material. And this uh, matrix shows a series of varieties of granular form, many of which contain granular bodies. The granules are shown here magnified in high power, and each granule contains all of the DNA that's necessary to rebuild and remanufacture a spiral modal form of a spirochete.
So here we have a new visual experience which awaits us. All of the images which follow will be new to you, and all of the images which follow are perfect. The round body is perfect, the granular form is perfect, and the biofilm form, the biofilm community is also perfect spiroidal material. Beginning with cystic, we have spirochetes, which are round, which may or may not contain material within the cyst wall, sometimes scant material stains, sometimes dense material stains. Here's one spirochete with a dense nucleus-like central content. Here's another cystic spirochete, again with a round human nucleus-like content, densely staining. Here's a spirochete that is round or cystic, contains a nucleus-like or karyosome-like structure, and has granular material in its content. And then in the red area, starred, are some very, very small round structures, which I'll keep you in suspense for one slide as to what these might actually represent. For comparison, this is the diameter of a corkscrew-shaped spirochete. It's relatively small compared with the large diameter of the cyst. Here again, another corkscrew-shaped form, relatively small in diameter compared with the huge diameter of the cyst. And then the diameter of the small round structures, which will be announced in the next slide, is minute. It's so small that it is not seen with the ordinary light microscope and requires the electron microscope to be viewed. By review, then, we have large caliber, round body spirochetal forms or cystic forms here and here, identified by the blue arrows. We have a portion of a corkscrew shaped spirochete indicated by the yellow arrows with a diameter that is very small compared to the diameter of the cyst form here or the cyst form here and we have small round things which we call blebs and blebs have a scientific name that scientific name is liposomes and the blebs emerge from the uh, spirochete as it courses its way through body tissues. Uh, like a uh, snail or a slug, spirochetes leave a slime trail as they move through tissues. And uh, it's uh, coincidental that the layer from which the blebs, these very small round structures, emerge is called the slime layer of the spiral form of Borrelia burgdorferi. It's the outer surface membrane material, and it surrounds a content of biological material which includes DNA of the spirochete. So this has DNA of the Borrelia spirochete, this is DNA of the Borrelia spirochete, and this form also, the spiral form also has DNA of the Borrelia spirochete. Now, cystic forms tend to contain water and other material, and when water is lost, just as a grape transforms into a raisin when it loses its water content, cystic forms of Borrelia, or round bodies, tend to shrink or wrinkle when water is lost from their internal region, and uh, you have a wrinkled profile in the membrane of the uh, partially collapsed, wrinkled uh, cystic spirochete. Here we have the staining with Borrelia-specific monoclonal antibody H9724. This only stains Borrelia. It does not stain any other bacteria in the microbial kingdom. It does not stain human cells. So if a structure stains with monoclonal antibody, H9724, provided generously to me by Dr. Alan Barber, professor at the uh, University of California, 
formerly at the Rocky Mountain Lab, one of the world's leading microbiologists and a uh, leading authority on Borrelia. Uh, Dr. Barber manufactured this monoclonal antibody and generously provided it to research investigators who are interested in studying Borrelia structure. That's how I got this picture. The green and yellow fluorescence indicates that there's abundant protein recognized by the antibody in the wall of the cyst. It identifies it very clearly as a Borrelia cyst. Nothing else on the planet will stain with this monoclonal antibody. It is Borrelia. Now, uh, this slide is a consolidation of the uh, lessons that we have learned so far. And the first is uh, the uh, 9724 monoclonal antibody staining a cystic or round body of Borrelia uh, in uh, tissue imprint. There's abundant protein, which the monoclonal antibody 9724 recognizes as Borrelia protein, and it stains brightly. Staining the same tissue which gave me this cyst with a silver stain uh, shows that a cystic form with silver is apparent in tissue in a paraconsection and uh, like the other form which I showed you that was wrinkled and cystic, this is also wrinkled and cystic. You can see that there's a wrinkle here, a partial area of collapse where water has been lost in the center of the spirochetal cyst or the round body, and maybe formally, when be, if before the water was lost, the structure filled all of this empty space around it. We can only uh, surmise that, but that happens during tissue processing. Water is lost, and the uh, cystic forms tend to collapse or become wrinkled. Now, when the tissue, which gave us these images, the cystic images, was placed in BSK culture medium and allowed to grow, these forms turned up. And these, of course, are very gratifying for those who expect to see spiral forms or corkscrew-shaped cork forms. These are corkscrew-shaped spiral modal Borrelia spirochetes. We can be sure that they're Borrelia spirochetes and not some other contaminant because these spirochetes stain with a specific monoclonal antibody that makes them Borrelia, just as the cyst is confirmed as Borrelia with the monoclonal antibody 9724, these forms are confirmed as Borrelia with staining with another monoclonal antibody developed by Dr. Alan Barber, the H332 antibody. And H332 does a double task. Not only does it confirm that the spirochetes which take the stain are Borrelia, but it tells us further that these uh, spirochetes that take the stain are Borrelia burgdorferi, the agent of Lyme disease. There are many species of Borrelia, and uh, this specific monoclonal antibody, H5332, is uniquely uh, associated with Borrelia burgdorferi. Now you can see that there is a spiral form here in the center panel. On either side, uh, the two panels show stretched spirochetes, which are not quite as regularly coiled, they're flattened, and this flattening occurs when the spiral form works its way through tissue, and the tissue forces compress it and distort it and stretch it out and make it less coiled than it would be if it were just sitting in liquid medium. The origin of the cystic form, or the round form, begins from the spiral as an outpouching of membrane. Here, the outer surface membrane is starting to enlarge and create an empty space. Further enlargement uh, occurs in this panel. And finally, a round cystic spirochetal form, or cyst form I like to call them, some people prefer to use the term round body, uh, is derived from this spiral form. And round bodies, or cystic forms, are there protect the spirochete and to let it survive in hostile conditions, such as conditions where antibiotics are present or other adverse uh, 
biological compounds are present in the adjacent medium. This is a scanning uh, of the uh, cystic spiroketal form of Borrelia burgdorferi using atomic force microscopy obtained by Dr. Truclossi. You can see that the spirochete has rounded up uh, and uh, formed what is like a ruler that a carpenter uses. So the spirochete uh, wraps around itself and forms a rounded structure and then sends out tail-like structures at either end. This round structure is the cystic form of the Borrelia spirochete. Now the tick gut model is instructive because the tick is the transmitter of Lyme disease and the transmitter of Borrelia burgdorferi. It would be interesting to see whether the uh, cyst gut contains only spiral forms or whether it contains other forms of the Borrelia spirochete. And here, from the work of Dr. Barber and his uh, colleague Fred Hayes at Rocky Mountain Lab, is a carpet of spiral forms of Borrelia from a tick gut preparation of, uh, examined with uh, electron microscopy. So here's our carpet of spirochetes. Here are the spiral forms. But in addition to the spiral forms, there are these round things. And these round things we now know are cystic spirochetes or round body spirochetes. They have a diameter which is much larger than the diameter of the spiral form, and in all respects, they are the cystic form or the round body form. These forms enable the spirochetal population to survive adverse conditions which may occur during starvation times when the tick is not in contact with a blood meal. Dr. Radolf's group at the University of Connecticut has stained the tick gut here using blue chromogen or pseudocolor to uh, highlight that many of the structures which are present in the gut of the tick, here's the wall of the gut of the tick, are round and they are in fact cystic forms of the Borrelia spirochete. So there's a mixture of spiral forms and cystic forms in the tick gut. To uh, review our spiral form, this corkscrew, our cystic form is round and may show coiled up material of the spirochete, which used to look like this, and now has rounded up and internalized itself and surrounded itself with a protective cell wall membrane. The blue bodies here are Dr. Radolf's images of cystic spirochetes in the tick gut, and the yellow structures here are Dr. Radolf's images of the spiral form of the Borrelia spirochete in the tick gut. The red material is the blood meal that the tick takes. It feeds on a small animal, or a large animal, or a human animal. This work from Dr. McClossey shows that the cystic forms of the spirochete will sometimes show tails. And these tails we have seen before in protonic force microscopy. And uh, they are often uh, seen protruding from the rounded edge of the cyst and sticking out into the neighboring fluid. These round bodies with tails then will, under ideal conditions, reform the spiral spirochete or the corkscrew spirochete and it will start reforming the spiral here at the tail end. And this will continue to elongate, the cyst will diminish in size, and a spiral modal spirochete will emerge from the round body or the cystic form. Here is an uh, atlas of cystic forms or round body forms obtained from a culture of spinal fluid from a patient who had Borreliosis infection of the spinal fluid and who had very bad pain involving the nerves supplying the arm and chest. After 12 months of incubation, these cystic forms or round body forms emerged and you can see that 
Some of them have small granular material. Some of them have larger uh, content with stains more intensely, which may uh, remind you of the nucleus-like structure I showed you earlier. And uh, there are all uh, sorts of different patterns uh, present. Here is a triangular form within a cystic or round body spirochete. These are all derived from a culture of a spinal fluid which was found to be positive by Western blot evaluation for evidence of Lyme borreliosis involving the human spinal fluid and causing the pain or the painful radiculoneuropathy, as, he, as it's uh, phrased in the medical jargon, uh, jargon uh, and uh, caused a patient uh, uh, disabling sym symptoms. After antibiotics, the pain diminished and the patient returned to normal good health. This is a high power of a cystic spirochete with both dense material and finely granular material within the lumen or the interior of the cyst. This was cultured from human cerebrospinal fluid in the case that I described to you above. Another one showing the triangular body within the cyst of a Borrelia spirochete cultured from human spinal fluid. Here is a very larger caliber spirochete with vaguely uh, discerned content inside the cyst uh, and an overall homogeneous or ground glass appearance to the cyst. So there are many varieties of cystic forms that may be cultivated from human spinal fluid or from blood or from tissue under the appropriate conditions. Live flood imaging uh, is going to be discussed in the next module of this uh, lecture series. It's an experimental uh, method that is uh, being perfected in Norway by my colleague, Dr. Morten Lani, and uh, hopefully this will uh, in the future be validated and be part of the diagnostic toolkit for the diagnosis of Borrelia infection.